right, so we just finished rendering the ambient occlusion map. Uh, we're gonna check the quality of the ambient occlusion map and see if there are any problems to fix. Let us see. Let's open this up in Photoshop. Update. As you can see, doesn't seem like there's a problem. There might be a border problem since I'm seeing here um, some sort of dark border here, but I think I don't think that it would be that of a problem since we're working on a terrain. Okay, now what we could do is um, copy this whole ambient occlusion map and pass it over our diffuse texture and we will probably remove the old one which we won't need anymore alright or instead of deleting it I'll just deactivate the layer itself okay let's pass the new ambient occlusion map set the blending to multiply as you can see it's already starting to look much better than the old one um, I'll just duplicate this another time, that way it could be just a tiny bit stronger. Okay. And merge them together. And then later on I can just tweak the opacity. Uh, I can start comparing both ambient occlusion maps. The one from... This one is coming from World Machine. Even though it has a resolution of 2048 by 2048 pixels, the one that comes from Mudbox looks way higher quality since it is ray traced and more accurate. Now what we could do now is render the cavity map to add some extra to bump up some extra detail. Now let's set up Mudbox to render a cavity map. So go back to Mudbox, go to Maps, go back to your extraction operation, select your ambient occlusion. And all you gotta do this time is change the file name at which you go it's going to be saved. So it's gonna be named cavity this time instead of AO. Make sure that's in a TGA format. And uh, we'll probably do a test render as well this time, just to be on the safe side. And change the filter, add two zeros and put it up to five. This means that's 0 0.0005. And we'll probably have to tweak it if there is a problem or not, if we think that it's not um, refined enough for a cavity map we can just go for lower values alright set up to fast oh now that that's not a something I'll probably have to render my ambient occlusion map again since it was set up to quality fast quality so it, it wasn't even at the best quality it's not even the best quality we can get we can probably get a better ambient occlusion map so uh, I'll probably render this out when I pose it later on so let's first finish do working on the cavity map real fa really fast. Extract this. up the cavity we're gonna compare both maps as well if possible that way you could see the difference when you change the filter size but this illustration won't be the best since the texture maps aren't at the same resolution so it's probably better to compare them once they're done at uh, the highest resolution and the highest quality possible anyways um, as for this I'll probably have to go to lower uh, 
filter size. Um, I'll probably use a, a 0 0.0002. This will probably do the thing in my opinion. notice a big difference here just by seeing the thumbnails of the ambient occlusion maps. Let's see. Update. And there you go. I just lowered the filter size and you got a bit more crisp detail and it will look much better when I render this out at the highest resolution possible and the highest quality possible. All right. I guess it's time to render this out at a high resolution. Oops. Time to not forget this time to set up the quality to best. Raycasting is on, all right. Image charge 2048 or 2048, anti-aliasing. It is best to turn it off for cavity maps. Turn it on, I mean. Um, okay. Alright, I'm gonna extract and post the video for a few minutes. We'll be back again. Alright, seems to be done. Took about five to seven minutes to render the whole thing, which was pretty fast compared to um, Mudbox, where, um, to normal, uh, X normal, sorry where it would take actually like two to three minutes to just uh, load the mesh itself. Um, okay. Let's update this and see how it looks. Okay, it's still not sharp enough. When you look closely, this is the normal ambient occlusion and this one is supposed to be the cavity map so we'll probably have to treat the filter a bit more I mean we can see that some some of the crevice is being dark in here but doesn't make that much of a difference that's what's important so we need to fix this okay So we we'll probably have to use um, a smaller, way smaller filter 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 size. There we go. Oh five. This will probably give the good results we've been looking for. Let's hope so. Just crossing fingers, extract, and pause the video again. All right, we're done rendering again. Time for the moment of truth. Update. Okay, cavity map seems to be over exaggerated in this case, but it is probably usable um, if we tweak the. Um, levels a bit but let's see let's redo step forward we'll just keep this one create um save it as what we're gonna do is blend together these two cavity maps Past, multiply, turn down the opacity just a tiny bit, maybe fix the level. 
Yeah, um, by the way, so if sometimes you might get some problems uh, when you're trying to render out a cavity map in Mudbox because the mesh in this case is probably because the mesh is just too low res to get some of the extra detail we're wanting to get. In this case, you can just export your high poly terrain and uh, your low poly terrain, which is basically a, pla a plane, a flat plane. Uh, and use X normal to render out the cavity map. So it's nice to have different tools to render the same texture maps. And each different tool renders that same texture map in a different way. Alright, let's see what we can do with the levels now. Are a bit too strong. Could as well just leave it the way it is. And just turn the opacity to max and tweak again the levels. We got an extra. I think looks nice enough. And you can see it does add. And this make up the cavity map we've been looking for. Okay. Um, I guess we can just fuse these together and save it as a GGA just in case since all these files will be up there in a zip file for you to download and you could experiment with so you'll have the three different versions of the cavity map now I'm gonna copy this cavity map and use it on my diffuse texture there it is so oh Pass it over and multiply this. Okay. Now we could still make some interesting stuff. I mean, we can colorize the cavity map in cer certain areas. I mean, instead of having a black one here uh, where the, the cliff's located, we can have a brownish one um, to, make, uh, to make it look a bit more, um, to break down, break it down a bit. Yeah, we 
could do that. I mean, especially for the cavities. I mean, the ambient occlusion, we can leave it the way it is. So. See how that looks. Uh, actually, never mind. I can just set the burning mode to normal. So, this is my cavity from my box. And oh, my box as well. Now, like I said earlier, I was planning to render out the um, ambient occlusion again and bring it in again. So, um, in hard quality, because we've done this one in fast quality. So, I'll just pause the video and I'll be back to this point again. Uh, so, I'm just going to render out the ambient occlusion map really fast. And I'll, I'll be right back. Alright, uh, so. Um, we're done rendering the um, high quality ambient occlusion map. Uh, what we could do now is save this diffuse file as a TGA again and preview this on the terrain in my box. Just to see if we have some things to tweak. Well, let's just see a little bit terrain here. Make the layers paint refresh selected. Oops, and apparently there's a small issue here. Probably need to save it again. delete the layer and re-import it. So this is our diffuse map with ambient occlusion applied to it. So in order to see that in a better way we'll probably have to use flat lightning lighting. There we go. Under it you'll probably see the plane, the low quality plane over there. But this is how it looks like without shading applied to it. looks nice. I don't know, I'm not sure about the um, color of the cliffs here. 